So 2023 was full of character design. I was coming off of the coattails of 2022, which was also all character design, except it was done for Dungeons and Dragons. It was a much more fantasy type of vibe. This year, I wanted to do something a little different. I'd had a project that had really been on my heart for several years, and that was a project of turning countries into magical girls. The goal was to be able to turn all countries into magical girls. And I started with the continent of Africa because Africa is always overlooked. So this one here is Botswana. A lot of the characters that I did for this series, their outfits look a bit more traditional because I incorporated more of the country's clothing into the magical girl design. But for some countries, they don't really have a traditional costume and Botswana is one of them. So I decided to go for something that looks a little bit more stereotypically magical girlish, something that you might see in like Pretty Cure or something. The little patterns that are used in like the lower half of her skirt, that is called Shui Shui, which is a traditional style of cloth in Botswana. Going in alphabetical order, the next girl that I did was Capo Verde. I love doing hair like this when I draw just like all these gorgeous, gorgeous curls. It's very therapeutic. And just like Botswana, Capo Verde is one of those countries that doesn't have a traditional outfit. So I was able to use my imagination a little bit with her design. I do have a traditional cloth, which I included in her skirt but the rest of her looks very like modern magical girlish. So next we have Comoros. I was working with a silhouette that I don't usually ever do. She's got this very, very long skirt, but she ended up getting quite a lot of love, which surprised me. A lot of people said they learned about a country that they didn't know existed before, which is always so special to hear. So next is Cuba. This design is quite old. I'm pretty sure I did this 2017. She was one of the earlier magical girls that I did because my best friend is Cuban. This girl doesn't look like my best friend at all, <laughs> but I still really enjoyed drawing her because she's got all this poofy, fluffy hair and the colors are really nice. I love all the lace. I especially love them. These little flyaways that she has attached to her bow. I think it's just so cute. The next magical girl that I did was the Democratic Republic of Congo and when I did her more sore towards the end of the year, I really like how this design came out because I just feel like her colors are so bright. It looks very magical girlish. Her design was inspired by the Congo dandy. So they're basically a group of people that they just celebrate being fashionable and look very dapper and cool. And there's a lot more that goes into it, but I won't cover it in this video. I love how her hair came out. It's like these little long pigtails. I especially love how I did her eyes. I feel like they're so bright and vibrant, just gorgeous. Next is Ghana, who has a very, very special place in my heart and she always will. I did a whole video on Ghana on this channel, so I won't go into too much detail here, but she was one of the first designs that I ever did for this project because I am Ghanaian so like naturally I had to do this country. Doing the research for her and just kind of getting to reconnect with my roots on my mom's side was so fun and so amazing. I really like how her face turned out. I feel like her face is just so soft and cute. I love like the yellow eyes which is weird because I normally don't like characters with gold eyes specifically, but she's definitely one of my favorite designs that I've ever made for this challenge. So the next character is Honduras. I'm pretty sure I'm not pronouncing that right, but I really like her design. I love the white and the blue. She just looks like a doll. This character got a lot more love than I was expecting. Somebody actually drew fan art of her, which was really, really cool. So next we have Ireland here. This was a fun one to do, although I would say her design turned out to be a little bit controversial because of her red hair. Even though a lot of Irish people do have red hair, the gene kind of came about through violent means historically. So the choice to give this character red hair was a very controversial one, but I really liked her red hair. I thought it was so cute. I think she has like my favorite face of all the girls that I've ever done for this series. Her little lips, her little eyes, ah, they're just so cute. And it was really fun to do the research for all the little Celtic symbols and stuff. I do wish that I had taken a little bit more time when I did this design. She came at a time when I was trying to like sort of batch these to get them out very quickly. And I found out a lot about Ireland and Irish lore and mythology after I already put out this character's designs. But in the end, I still think that her design is, is very cute. The next girl is Jamaica. I like the plaid in her dress and I just like all the sparkles. I feel like she has a lot of really nice textures going on. I also thought that adding the flowers was a nice touch. I had been thinking about adding in like national flowers for a lot of these girls. 
but I only did it for a couple because I was really strict about wanting to use only the colors in a country's national flag. But I kind of like how I broke that rule for Jamaica because I think the purple just adds something nice to her overall design. Next we have Lebanon. I struggled with her at first because I didn't really know how to paint her face. I spent a lot of time trying to get her features to look the way I wanted it to. I love how her face turned out. It's one of my favorite faces that I've done for any of the girls. But yeah, doing the research for this country was so difficult. Pretty much all the information that I got came from TikTok and listening to people of the culture just kind of explain what they knew. I absolutely love this little veiled hat she has. It's called a, a tantor. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. So overall, I think she came out really cute. Next, we have Nigeria. This is also one of the older designs for this series. I think I made her sometime in, I want to say 2019. And Nigeria has been my mom's favorite design since I made her. I love the little cutouts in her sleeves and I love her little bow-shaped gele. I saw a reference picture of this many, many years ago. And when I saw it, I was like, I absolutely have to do this. <laughs> She's also the only magical girl who I gave eyeshadow and I think it suits her so well. I imagine that this character is very bold and outspoken and just very fun and lively to be around. Next, we have Niue. Niue is a very, very tiny island in Oceania. It's only got like 2,000 people on it. And that's the reason why I did this country because it's so small. I think she came out so cute. It was difficult to manage the colors at first because there's so many going on. Very difficult to do the clothing research for this character, but I did my best. Next, we have Poland. Poland has a lot of very interesting national costumes because they differ so much based on where in Poland you are. But there was one in particular I found where the colors were just red and white. And because the colors of the Polish flag are red and white, I had to go with that one. I especially love her little flower crown. These are poppies, which is the national flower of Poland. She was a lot of fun to do. 10 out of 10 would do it again. Next, we have Sierra Leone. Doing the research for this particular country was so special because I remember the pattern on her dress that I love so much. I got it from a video watching African-Americans repatriate back to Sierra Leone. They took a DNA test and they found out that they had heritage that traced their roots back to Sierra Leone. So watching that video, I found people wearing these dresses with these patterns in it with all the colors of the Sierra Leonean flag. And I thought it was the most adorable thing that I had ever seen. So I sampled the pattern and I included it in this girl's outfit. The next girl for this series was the Netherlands. And this one is kind of funny because my mom was watching the entire process of me drawing this character and she had a lot to say about her because she did not like her. When I was first doing this character, she had a very different hairstyle. My mom, she was just saying, this girl, she looks so plain. She looks so ugly. Why are you designing her this way? And I'm just like, wait, mom, like, just wait. It's just a draft, okay? It's gonna look good in the end. And like every day my mom would come in and say, I don't like what you're doing to this girl. Like, I don't like her. <laughs> so I changed the entire hairstyle just to get my mom to stop complaining. But in the end, out of all the girls that I've done for this series, her hair is my favorite. I especially love the little triangular bonnet on her head. She's so cute. The next character is the Philippines. I'm pretty sure the Philippines ended up being the most liked magical girl on my account, which was so nice. I did struggle a lot with her design. Doing the research for it was fun, but getting the silhouette right was difficult. I remember I spent like a whole week just trying to get something that I liked down. In the end, her design remains to be one of my favorites. I really like how it incorporates the traditional butterfly sleeves of the Filipiniana dress. Yeah, I based her entire backstory on a teacher that I really, really loved. So this character is very special to me for so many reasons. The next girl, is USA version one. I remember I had kind of been struggling with adding like the turquoise into her design. I pretty much wanted to just stick to colors in the flag for their designs. But in this particular case, the turquoise is so symbolic to the Navajo. This character is, is Navajo or Diné. That is where her outfit is inspired from. Yeah, the turquoise is so symbolic and Navajo regalia. So I broke my rule. I think the result looked so cute. But the one thing I maybe don't like so much is her hair. I think I could do something a little bit better. This next girl is one of my favorites. I'm probably a little bit biased, but I genuinely love this character. This is USA version two. She was inspired by the African-American heritage flag. So like doing the research for this, 
was very fulfilling. I also love the colors, like the red and the black and the gold. It's just such a powerful com com It's just such a powerful combination to me. And of course, because like African Americans, we don't really have any sort of traditional costume. I was able to put my own spin on things, which is always a lot of fun. I especially love how I drew her face. The golden eyes came out so cute. And like, I love how her little braids and dreads came out. I think she might be the only one that has a weapon, but it's in the flag. So I thought it made sense for her. I would like to draw more of her this year for sure. So this next one is USA version three, who I would say is probably the most stereotypical of the three, but I also really, really really love this character she was a little bit controversial because a lot of people were like oh my god not another blonde cowgirl but although i get it that was kind of the point <laughs> she was the very first magical girl that i ever did for that series and i'd kind of designed her as a joke she was supposed to be very stereotypical quote unquote american and i just had a lot of fun with this design i was laughing the whole time i'm american and i don't take my country very seriously at all i think america is the biggest meme so i had no problem with this and i intend to draw more of her this year in fact i intend to draw all of the usa girls a little bit this year we'll see how i feel about it next we have puerto rico i love how i painted her the most i tried some different and painting techniques and I just ended up loving how it came out. I had a friend of mine from Puerto Rico help me gathering research for her outfit design and he did a great job. Thanks to him, I absolutely love how she turned out. The next one we have here is Venezuela. This is another one of my favorite designs. I think I just really fell in love with how big and cute her skirt is. She looks like a goddess and I was inspired mostly by a TikTok I saw of Venezuelan dancers who wore a dress just like this and I feel like this character, she got a lot of love and that was very special to see. I love everything about this. Definitely one of my favorites and she came out so cute. And that is the final magical girl that I did for my series. There were 21 that I did. Almost all of my creative energy last year went into making all of my girls for this magical girl series, but definitely this year I need a break from them as fun as they are. <laughs>
She was also a pain to find a design for. I tried eight or nine different designs. Arkansas is literally nicknamed the natural state. So I wanted to kind of make her look like a hiker or, or an outdoorsy person. But the first couple designs that I did for her, I kind of ran them through my Instagram polls for feedback. <laughs> and unfortunately, like a lot of people told me, girl, it's giving tourist. I ended up scrapping the whole hiker aesthetic thing. I just wanted her to look like a very down to earth girl that just loves to go outside. Oh, she's also the last one. I had intended to do way more, but then it was burnout and that ended up falling by the wayside. I would probably do more state girls in the future, but if I do do them, I will probably rebrand them. I'm thinking they'll come back as royalty or something. Next up, I have some digital pieces. They aren't part of any sort of series. This one that I did was from a TikTok to create a celestial themed OC. And this is a big breath of fresh air. This gave me a chance to do something more mystical. I did this in Procreate. I'd really like to redraw her in Photoshop just because I think I could render her out a little bit better. So these two are character designs that I did for a series that I wanted to make about creating characters inspired by K-pop songs, which is really, really random. I was really proud of how these two came out. This one here is inspired by the song Pop Goblin by CLC. I loved CLC back when they were making music. And this girl here is inspired by Girls by Espa. And this ended up being the most popular post on my account. This is Asha from from the Disney movie Wish, which I did not watch, though I intend to watch it at some point. And this here is the Star Boy. In the movie, Asha has like this magical star companion. In the original concept art, he had a humanoid version that got scrapped. When TikTok found out about it, everybody was kind of distraught. I was one of those people who was also very distraught. So I have memorialized my disappointment in the form of fan art. So I had started a project at some point last year where I wanted to turn all all of the evolutions into baddies. And I was really passionate for a while, but then at some point I just burned out in the entire project. But I did manage to do this and also the gender bent version, which I think came out pretty cool. I really need to work on drawing men this year. <laughs> at the end of 2023, I was really missing my fantasy world. So I wanted to do something to bring me back to fantasy, which is my first love when it comes to making art. And this was a good escape. This spread was sort of inspired by a older piece of artwork that I made in 2020 with a girl and her unicorn. And I kind of expanded upon that to make an entire unicorn cavalry. I like how it's going so far and I would love to finish it this year. So this section is the sketches that I did in 2023. And these are some of my favorite artworks. I got obsessed with these two, absolutely obsessed with these two towards the end of 2023. These are my OCs, Peyton and Aries. Aries is here, he is a gang leader and Peyton is here. She's part of a gang, I think. I, her story is kind of up in limbo at the moment, but either way, these two aren't really supposed to be together. They have kind of a forbidden love dynamic going on, but they are so cute <laughs> and I'm so obsessed with them. So these two pictures are studies that I was doing of couples. I remember this one in particular was really difficult to get the perspective on, but I think it came out pretty okay. And this one was difficult because I'm not particularly proud of how Aries and Hedemi looks here in this picture. I think his face looks okay. Peyton's face looks pretty okay. But the anatomy here is maybe not the best. And so this is why I really, really wanted to focus on drawing guys this year. You know, this was uh, such a guilty pleasure of mine. These are more sketches of my OCs, my boys. Over the summer, I was playing around a lot with AI image generation, which honestly, it was the most fun that I've ever had in a very long time. And that is how Aries and Elysian came about. They were spawned through image generation and I fell in love with them and I made them my OCs. So here I was drawing them for the first time. I was really scared to draw them because the renders that the AI gave me looked really, really handsome. And I was like, oh my God, if I draw these guys, I'm going to mess them up because I don't know how to draw men. I, I decided to draw them anyway. This is Aries here. I still don't really like how his sketch came out. Um, I was really disappointed in how this ended up looking, but I tried my best. And then this was Elysian. He came out better than I thought he would, but in hindsight, he could be better, in my opinion. I want to draw more of my boy this year. And then this is Aces. He was originally supposed to be Peyton's younger brother, but I swapped Laura around and now um, I don't really know where he stands. He just kind of looks done with life. <laughs> That's kind of his personality a little bit. He He's just like super chill. He's kind of similar to Elysian, but Elysian acts chill, but like has no chill. <laughs> this here, 
is a sketch of my baby Peyton. Peyton has had a lot of different looks over the years and before I changed her over the summer, this is sort of what she looked like. I remember when I did this, I had intended to make it a whole page and put like some expression references along some of these empty spaces, but I ended up just scrapping the whole thing. In the future, I'll probably come back to this because I do want to like make a character sheet of her and Aries at some point during this year, but for now, that's uh, that's what we got. Like I said earlier, I had tried to do a whole little series of evolutions, and this was the first batch. These are actually the three Pokemon that I was the most excited about. I was trying to imagine what these girls would look like in my world of the Angel Sector, which is the same world that Aries and Peyton come from. I was trying to imagine what they would look like as girls in the gang. I think Umbreon, I love her design the most, and then Espeon is a close second. After Sylveon, I just kind of got really uninspired <laughs> with the rest of the designs. This whole project took me a couple days to do and I think I was just you know really kind of trying to push myself to get this out just so I could make some content for for Instagram and so my account wouldn't die or whatever. Um, it burned me out of this project so I stopped um, but I did manage to do Leafy on. I think she did come out pretty cool. This was another set of character designs inspired by K-pop songs. The K-pop song was I think Teddy Bear by Stacy. I don't even like teddy bear. <laughs> I don't like that song at all, but I thought that the outfits used in that music video were so freaking adorable. So I made these two designs inspired by that song. My favorite one is definitely this one here. It just looks very sweet. I really like the corduroy skirt here. This was a chance to kind of just experiment with textures that I don't ever normally try. So like the knitted sweater, the knitted um, socks, that was also fun. Some of my favorite designs that I've made. So this here is just a study that I did in 2023 that I was really, really proud of actually. There was a point where I was going absolutely ham trying to figure out how to draw men specifically lens torsos because a lot of anatomy there that I don't understand what's happening and it was very interesting to learn and I'm starting to recognize the landmarks of the torso a lot more. So this was the year that I learned something so crucial and fundamental and that is the simple art of being able to simplify forms with like basic shapes. This is a core fundamental that I just completely overlooked for like my entire artistic career. And this was me trying to apply what I had learned. It's made drawing poses so much easier. And then these next couple of sketches are gesture drawings that I did. I did these in Procreate. I was trying to get out of a period of art block. I believe I did this over the summer. I was spending it at a cousin's house and I had just kind of become like really sad. And this was my attempt at trying to crawl out of that hole. So yeah, I did some gesture studies and I definitely would like to do a lot more in 2024. Ooh. This picture here, these are the only traditional artworks that I did all year in 2023. And they were studies of the abs, again, and more of this um, box study sort of thing. I had been worried about trying to draw with a pencil again after spending my entire year just drawing digitally. These do not look as bad as I thought that they would. I want to show you just the works and progresses and the sketches and artworks that I didn't really post. This is a comic strip that I made for a book that I read called Haunting Adeline. It's a very adult book, um, a very edgy book. Don't read it. Don't read Don't read it if you value your sanity. But I got very obsessed with this book. In fact, it got me back into reading after almost like a decade plus of just finding reading to be like the most mind numbing thing in the universe. Anyone who has not read the book, the main character, his name is Zaid. He um, kind of uh, is obsessed. With, yeah, we'll say that. He's very obsessed with this girl named Adeline. And in this little comic strip, I was trying to make a funny meme of her just like telling him to like go away. And he was just like, no, <laughs> using that uh, Queen Charlotte meme that was so popular towards the end of the year, but I ended up not doing it. This is also around the time that I was starting to burn out a little bit. I was like, um, I'm not going to draw this. So I didn't. I'm still obsessed with this book and just looking at this little comic strip just makes me laugh sometimes. <laughs> this was page two. So for more bookish stuff, this is a very unfinished webcomic, but basically on Instagram last year, there was kind of this thing going on between motorcycle TikTok and like book TikTok. <laughs> All these motorcycle guys were like reading these books and trying to get the book loving girls to follow their content. It was working because book girls love guys in helmets. We, we don't have to get into that. I had just wanted to memorialize this phenomenon with a little reel, but it was becoming more of an animatic storytelling sort of thing. So I ended up stopping um, before I really got too far. 
But to this day, the whole way that this exploded, this whole phenomenon is just funny. This is a humanized version of one of my oldest OCs. I was trying to redraw him in 2023, but like I said, I don't really love how I draw men. So I was very unhappy with how this came out. I will try to draw him again once I have more practice. I made a whole reel that I posted onto my Instagram and then I I just felt so embarrassed by this artwork that I eventually just like took the reel down. His torso is so freaking huge <laughs> and like not in a good way. It looks quite unrealistic. Hopefully by the end of 2024, I can look back on this and say, oh wow, I'm so much better than this now. <laughs> Ooh, these are fun. So last year I had asked my Instagram followers, what should I draw? So I got a bunch of different requests, but I ended up only doing four. So these two are of Nigeria and Lebanon from the uh, Nacio Magica series. So I thought it would be cute to kind of just draw them together, taking a selfie. Um, to this day, this is one of my favorite sketches. I think it's just so precious. Um, and then this here is Puerto Rico. And I just drew her dancing. She looks so cute. I love her. And then for these two, um, someone requested that I draw a pirate. So I did. And then somebody also requested that I draw a dragon boy, which made me very, very happy because I love dragons. And this character is from a Otome game that my best buddy and I tried to make many, many years ago. His name was, I think, Just Stall. But he was a, an angry boy who uh, was trying to prove himself because he was like in a legitimate son or something. And he had like this broken horn and it was like a symbol of disgrace. And he was just like, I really have to prove myself. So he was like extra edgy. And I don't even know why. It's a shame that I kind of forgot about him and pretty much all the other boys from that game. But it was really nice to just kind of go back and revisit him. When I get better at drawing men, I will definitely draw him again. And then these are just some studies. I learned earlier this year from Kasem about the power of like simplifying perspective through cubes. And I was trying to do that with the head. And this changed my life. <laughs> bottle of ketchup and you have mustard which is weird because usually your manny's my dreams why do you suppose that is oh, come on yo can you move over a little bit i got no room i'm up against the window thank you jesus wait, wait, wait come on you want to make love do we got the ingredients for that